right? Today I have a very special person with me, Amit Mukin. He is the Vice President of Thai Mumbai. He is also the Managing Director of IQWA uh, South Asia. Now IQWA is the world's largest data company which provides data to life sciences companies around the world. But I think today's topic and discussion is more to do with Amit's passion. Uh, he is a wellness and fitness enthusiast uh, and marathon runner. Uh, he's just done about 14 marathons in five years in three countries. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's his work that kind of stops him from running more. Uh, and the interesting thing is he also drives the passion of wellness within his company. Uh, he just manages about 15,000 plus people in Asia and uh, he kind of mentors them in the entire aspects of wellness and fitness. Uh, he is on several boards, especially Nat Health and Thai Mumbai. Uh, he's got 19 years of experience in consulting. Uh, he was the youngest partner at KPMG at the age of 32 and went about doing a lot of wonderful stuff, including setting up a healthcare practice. Uh, very interestingly, he's a, I would call him as an active uh, angel investor. He's a mentor to startups and he promotes innovation and entrepreneurship in healthcare. And on today's topic, I will completely give it to Amit. It's about physical and mental agility for entrepreneurs. I request all of you to kind of participate. This is going to be a very interactive kind of a session. And uh, over to you, Amit. You can set the stage. Thank you, Naveen. And uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let, me, uh, let me correct Naveen. Uh, at the first, it's not 14 marathons. Uh, it's uh, 14 races. Some of them are marathons. Uh, it's, it's obviously very tough to do, uh, in, you know, so many marathons in three to four years. Uh, but, uh, you know, when I was, uh, when Naveen, uh, and I discussed, uh, as we are working through Thai, uh, and what is it that we can speak to the entrepreneur community about? One of the things, uh, we felt, uh, is that it's very important at this time to actually go back to some of the basics that we forget whenever we are overwhelmed with a certain situation. And uh, this is why uh, when I was thinking about this topic and you know, I am, I am no professional speaker. I am not a nutritionist. I am not an athlete. I am an ordinary human being as every one of you. And I know that many of my friends are also on this uh, session. So thank you for being there. My, what I wanted to actually do today, uh, while there is, a, there is a small piece that I have put together to share with you based on my own life experience, I wanted this to also be a conversation between us. Uh, and I think each of us has a unique story. Each of us is going through a situation which is, while it's common to all of us, it is also the way we are thinking about it could be different. And each of us, I think, have something wonderful that we've done during this time that we can learn from. So to me, this is a session which I would like to share, but at the same time, I'd like to learn as well. So I hope that we'll have some time at the end of my talk to uh, also share some experiences, some suggestions, some hacks which you all can share with the group and me to take on as we move forward. <clears throat> when I was thinking about the topic of this uh, and you know, Tripti and Naveen called it mental and physical agility. To me, it was very simple. To me, it was, we are what we think. And ultimately it's the thought which defines our reality. And if you can go to the next slide, uh, Naveen. At the end of this session, what I want is, and it will be successful is if I could make 50% richer. And let me define how I'm talking about this 50%. To me, the most important resource, and especially at this time, and resource beyond wealth, beyond intelligence, beyond everything else is our energy. Our energy is our output. Think about it. How many of us feel even more tired at the end of the day nowadays than we used to in the pre-COVID situation when we had a lot more travel, we had a lot more interaction. Why are we feeling a lot more tired when we are even working from home? Because there is a certain underlying 
drainage of that energy and this is a way in which that energy is not getting built up so to me what i want to leave you with is if we can increase our energy by 50% and 25% of it would be wasting or reducing the waste that we are actually carrying through too many ways and the balance 25% is how do we build it up so this talk is actually divided into two parts what do we do to reduce the 25% leakage and what do and gain it back and what do we do to actually build the extra 25% and this is something if we can carry through beyond this time i think that is what will put you guys as entrepreneurs and many entrepreneurs around this on this talk on your a game next slide please i think the way we look at this current situation and why i think it's slightly different from the rest of the time is i would call it collective crisis in collective crisis what happens is we all go through the same situation but the interpretation of the stress or the pain that we are going through is different and in a collective crisis and collective crisis comes during war times during times of epidemic times of pandemic when your community and everyone around you is also impacted by what you are going through and in those times what happens is you are even more on your own to deal with the thoughts that are going through your mind and the stresses that you are going through because everybody else is also going through their own moments of stress right and which is why i think it's so important that we need to work through on our own physical and mental agility because in this time of collective crisis we need to make sure that not only are we on top of our game that we can help people around us are who are also going through their own issues could use some of the things that we could do for them if i look at the time that i have gone through in the last 4 or 5 months and by no means this is the first time in my 44 years i would have seen several situations uh, in my personal life whether they've been professional or personal that have come through and gone but these five months actually have been quite interesting because the first few months were very tough and one of the biggest things i realized was the overwhelming feeling that i had was a fear of uncertainty of the future worry for the family members pain to see what people were going through in terms of whatever was going on around us and yet the helplessness and the realization that actually we are so inconsequential in everything that happens around us that we cannot control it and i really the awareness came to my mind that there are a lot of things that are out of our control that we will have to deal with and i am making this point to this group because as entrepreneurs you will realize that there are so many variables and so many situations that are coming through and these have been magnified during this time that are out of your control and you can't deal with them all you have to do is you have to see through them right but is the the other point is also that many realities have emerged during this time in this world one reality is when we see the number of infections the number of people being affected by this disease and that's going up right there are people and for them and for us this pandemic is real the other reality is many people are getting unemployed they're losing their incomes and many people are going through economic stress but at the same time there is another reality the other reality is a lot more people are focusing on their health and well-being the other reality is a lot more people are spending time with their families and many entrepreneurs are actually disrupting the world with new innovation so there are several realities out there right and our reality will be shaped by how we need, we will be thinking you these times and why it's so important and i will make the linkage between this and what i talked about in the 25% on the energy state because whatever we think and whatever we filter that comes to our mind will actually lift or deplete our energy state and you will have to be conscious about that now many of you all would be aware that we have anywhere between 15 to 50000 thoughts per day and there has been research that has been done that 80% of these thoughts are negative and 95% of these thoughts are thoughts that you are repeating from the previous day so think about it 
during the day, your mind is processing thousands and thousands of thoughts. And you are spending a lot of your energy working through each thought. And if we are not aware of what we are thinking, we will actually go on autopilot mode because our, 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 our environment and our surroundings are telling us that what is going on is actually a state of emergency around us, right? And which will be operating in a stress state. So what is going on is that while you're sitting at home and while we are doing, we are plugging away on our work, a large part of what is happening is what your mind is processing and telling you. So it is a classic proof of what is happening is that your thoughts are becoming your reality. And we need to keep this in mind that whatever we think is actually the world we are creating around us. The Marines have something called the 40% rule. I don't know how many of y'all have heard about it, but we actually use it a lot when we are running marathons. When we say that when our body gives up, a large part of it is when our mind has given up. And I have seen it many and often when I have crashed during the, during the training or during the race, when my mind has told me it's done. I can't run anymore. My legs are pink. My body is dehydrated. I am going to crash. I'm getting a heart stroke. I'm getting a heat stroke. And then I see in a few minutes time, my muscles are frozen because my mind has taken over my body. And Marines call it the 40% rule because they have scientifically proven that at that point of time of exhaustion, you have only used 40% of your resources, but your mind has told you to shut down in an order to protect yourself and in order to restore yourself. And this is exactly what is going on in this situation right now. Our mind, given the confines that we are in, has taken over our entire life and it is dictating based on what we are feeding into it. And the biggest piece that is going in right now is the uncertainty, which is why our reality right now is a lot about what is going to happen in the future. And if we don't control that thought process, it will manifest in how we are thinking or acting through the day. Next slide, please. And you must understand that anything that is uncertain creates fear. And fear is created when you're faced with an unknown outcome. And fear creates stress. Now think about it. If you are standing in front of an animal, would you stand and breathe and meditate? What will happen to you? Your body will freeze. Your mind will freeze. Your breathing will become shallow. You'll have a knot in your stomach and you will either run or you will just stand there. So in fact, what has taken over is your body has gone into an autopilot mode because of extreme fear of what is going to happen next with respect to that wild animal. Now, juxtapose it in the current situation. There is no wild animal around, but there is the uncertainty and the fear that is around us that is creating that stress. And what will happen in that stress that is that your mind will actually move from being a rational mind to actually thinking irrationally, where every reaction you will have, whether it's your investors, whether it's your customers, whether it's your family members, the stress will trigger a response that is not your best response. And hence, it is so important that we need to think through how we are responding to every situation during the day, because every response that we give under the influence of stress will only make the next response even more suboptimal. And it is absolutely natural at this stage that many people think, you know, we are stressed. Uh, it's bad to be stressed. It is not our A game to be stressed, but you have to realize that you will go through these moments of stress because the situation around us and even beyond will trigger certain reactions in us the trick becomes, how do you bounce back? And every time you bounce back and you're aware that you're moving into that zone needs to be thought through. So the trigger point is the more important point than the point of reaction. And the trigger points are few. Just in terms of very practically thinking about it, you will notice that your breathing will change. You will notice that the tone of your voice will change. You will notice that your heart rate will change when you are stressed. And at that point, it is very, very important that you step back and take a breath and really think whether this is something that how you want to react is the way you would do it or not do it. 
I have seen in these situations, and you would relate to it as well. There are friends of mine who have had to shut down businesses that they have built with a lot of love, with a lot of passion during these times. There are situations where people have had to let go of things that they have been working with for years. There are, pe there are times where people have taken on more and more borrowings from different sources just to tide over these times. And the biggest issue about it is that we don't know when this is going to end. Now, what we need to realize is that in all of this situation, the more rational we are and the more calmly we deal with these things, the more we will be able to control ourselves and the outcomes of whatever is in our control during the day and forward. We don't know what is going to happen two, three months down the line. All we have a control over is how do we manage our own mind, which is why I'm elaborating this point that we need to operate from a point of calmness and not from a point of stress. Because there's another issue around this, that the more we operate from a point of stress, the less effective we'll be in decision making, the less meaningful interactions are going to be, the lower our productivity is going to be, and the lower our immunity is going to be. So irrespective of how old you are, what stage you are in, what health condition you are in, you need to make sure that you understand that your energy is your greatest asset right now. There are two other things. You have a lot of time at your hand and you have your relationships at your hand, right? And these are the other things that are consuming your time and your headspace. One way to conserve your energy is to stop spending time that deplete it. And a classic example of that is either negative news or self-criticism. And you will realize that during the time you're spending with yourself at this stage, you will go through bouts of self-criticism because a lot of things that are happening around you are not your best outcome. You are losing a customer. You're not making the sale. Your investor pitch is not going well. And you will second guess your own capability, but you need to stop there because the situation is out of your control and people will behave or react in ways more driven by the situation than your own capability. The second is negative news. Please stop listening to media reports and news around whatever is happening because media feeds off negativity. It is a classic proven fact that we succumb to negativity more than great news and which is why it's so important to block ourselves from anything that is negative. I, when I look at myself and when I see what is the difference between a great day and a not so great day, my biggest parameter is how energetic I feel at the end of the day. And the days I have spent in meaningful conversations with either my colleagues or my uh, uh, family members, when I have spent doing work with a lot of focus, when I have spent time in actually calming myself and not giving into stress, I, I see that my energy level at the end of the day is way more than when I have reacted more than I responded, when I have worked through and given in to whatever is going on and let fear and uncertainty consume me. And in all of this, next slide please, the one tool you have and all of us have been gifted is your breath. And every system, you need to understand, every system in our body relies on oxygen. And this is your 25% energy lock. You have to consciously observe your breath. There is no underestimating the power of what breath can do for you during the day. And like, you know, I, I compare breathing and mindfulness relating to breathing as the shower or the bathing of the mind. Like we have a shower of our body every day, we need to shower our mind. And there are two things that have worked for me. One is belly breathing. It is just breathing through your belly whenever I'm stressed. And I practice this very often, especially when I am getting a call from someone, I think I will have potentially a not so easy conversation with. I think the conversation becomes much more smoother for me if I have breathed through my belly three times before I've picked up that phone, because then my way of interacting with that individual is more measured. And there's a scientific reason to this. What happens is that take the wild animal example again. What happens when you see a wild animal? Your breathing becomes shallow. Your body becomes tense, right? So there is a linkage between how your breath and your body react. And if you reverse that cycle, 
and you calm your breathing down, your body tells you it is okay. And you will then not operate from the mindset of stress or of that whole strain with that interaction, but you will operate it from a calmness perspective. So that's worked for me, belly breathing. The other is 10 breaths. Just breathing 10 times whenever I am upset about something. It completely resets my mindset and you can do it at any point of time. It takes 15 seconds, but just sit down and breathe 10 times either before an important pitch or before a tough conversation, after a tough conversation or an important decision. You will realize that your response to that particular situation will become way better. It may be a very simple thing to many of you, but at this time, I wanted to reiterate this because your breath is the most important tool that you have and you need to use it if you haven't at this stage even more. There are loads and loads of platforms, apps, and it's not that I'm saying something new. If you look at what has been happening, there have been 10 million downloads for the, for the month of these seven or eight apps I have put down. And these are very standard apps. There are many, many more, which many of us, your friends would have created, but do sign up on any one of these, try them out, whatever works for you and try and make it a habit every morning. You will see in a week to today, the quality of your morning will change and the quality of your morning will change. The quality of your day will change. So the most important thing to lock your 25% wastage is your breath. I've also put down a couple of books that I've read, which are amazing books. There are many, many books on meditation and breath work, but try these two books. They're simple books. They've been written. One has been written by uh, a very, very uh, uh, revered monk, Thich Nhat Hanh. And uh, the other one is uh, Dan Harris, who's written about uh, how meditation made him 10% uh, happier. Uh, try, try some of these. I'll be very happy to share any more uh, books uh, if any one of y'all want to read more, but uh, this will work. And the last point I want to mention on my breath work and when Naveen was talking about the marathons, the first race I ran was only with my breath. I had not been able to train in the way athletes do. I wanted to run. It was a half marathon. I remember that I ran that race only on my breath and then I realized the power of what a breath can do for you. It is the linkage between your life force and your body. And that is the way you will see that if you focus on your breath every morning, you will change the quality of every interaction you have. Now let me move to the other 25%. Can I move to the next slide? And there are lots of things we could have talked about. And this is about how you build your energy. The three most important things to restore your energy are food, sleep, and movement. This is the mantra. This is the triage on which your life sits. Nourishing food, great sleep, and good movement. I will focus only on movement today because there's, there's lots we can talk about. But I think why I'm talking about movement is I know that all of us are eating hopefully much healthier food, apart from the ones who are not being able to cook. Uh, or do things uh, or get access to healthy food. But I know that many of us are eating much healthier food. Many of us, I hope, are getting better quality sleep. But movement is something I feel that either people have compromised upon or not realizing the importance of. What you need to remember, if, I'm, if I can move to the next slide, please. What you need to remember is that we are designed to move. Our pollution from cavemen to hunters, to farmers has been based on hunting and movement. The moment we sit still, our cellular and our genetic structure will start telling us that we are sick and it will start either obliterating us or it will start working on us in a way that will be suboptimal for our bodies. So we have to move. We have to move because movement is what fires up the neurotransmitters in our brain. Movement is what brings us all the energy that we need and makes us feel good. It helps not only in digestion and metabolism, but it also helps in immunity as well as detoxification with all the sweat you have. So please understand that movement is not optional at this stage and this time. Movement is absolutely important because not only will it work at your physical level, it will work at your mental and emotional level as well. It will, you will see that as you move and you inculcate movement in your daily routine, 
it will sharpen your focus it will improve your sleep it will reduce your stress and more importantly it will help you project a more energetic self to the others which will help you cultivate better relationships and it's as little as 10 minutes of movement but i can guarantee you that those 10 minutes of movement and as you build up will actually benefit your health for the long term and i have proof to show you uh, and i was wondering whether you know uh, i should really put it out there or not but i did if i can move to the next slide these are these are four pictures of me at different points of my time okay 2001 uh, this is a picture when i was in uh, the united states and uh, this is a time when i had actually inculcated a lot of exercise in my lifestyle because i had been diagnosed with a potentially life threatening disease so i had knocked off almost 20 kilos through good movement and a lot of exercise 60 minutes of exercise and weight training every day as well as good quality eating and i felt at a different level of energy during the time but the time i spent in the united states uh slowly drifted away and i became lazier and in 2006 when i came back i had i was almost 85 kilos i was eating all kinds of junk food i had no movement i had felt the lowest point of my energy and you can see how it went on till 2012 when i realized that this is something i really need to do and you know what got me into the running circuit was a friend i think he's on this webinar and i will not name him but i he and i used to spend a lot of time together and i always found him to be very high energy and extremely happy and i asked him one day i said what is it that you do that makes you so energetic and so happy so he called me the next morning at 5 o'clock uh, and he said why don't you come down and uh, we'll go for a run that day i could run only 800 meters and it was somewhere late in 2012 in 2016 i completed a 21k in about 115 115 odd minutes uh and then i went on to actually do full marathons as well across a few countries and racing actually a running became part of my life but what it gave me what it gave me more than a great set of friends it gave me the energy it gave me self belief because the moment your mind and your body are with you you need nothing more to actually work through with life these are your two biggest assets that you have to carry together and any form of exercise connects your mind to your body and the more you push your body your mind becomes stronger so it's almost how you determine and strengthen your will power through continuous discipline and exercise and which is why it is so important that you need to integrate movement and exercise in your routine and it could be running it could be cycling it could be 25 minutes of yoga it could be 25 minutes of high intensity training you have a lot at your disposal right now a few years ago there were not many options that we had it's a question of you taking out time uh, what i have started to do is uh, the days if i can't do it in the morning i do it during my lunch time and it really helps me to reinvigorate the rest of the day it's almost like breaking the day into two parts so you can try that as well but do get movement inside your system and you will see again in the next 10 to 15 days your life is going to change try the breath work try the movement and i have no doubt that you will see the quality of your life change now before before i uh, uh, open it to hear from all of you and i would love to hear your stories uh, i was thinking about what are the few things that really have become you know the learnings from my own life and uh, some of you all may relate to this uh, some of it is extremely personal to me but i'm still sharing it with you because this is what uh, actually defines me as an individual and uh, if i can go to the next slide please i think the one thing i have learned through all the crises that have been to get uh, been in my uh, life is that nothing lasts forever everything changes whether it's good or bad and this time will also change and your narrative as your of the situation is your truth and if you change your narrative you will bend the reality if you if you get up the next morning and you say the today is a wonderful day your reality will change if you get up the next morning and you say today is a day 
which is going to be the worst day of my life, your reality will manifest that. And you need to understand that you will not be okay a lot of times. And that's absolutely okay. Do not get stressed about being stressed. Sometimes it's okay to not be okay. And remember that nothing is the end of the world for you till you're dead. If you're still alive, you will still be screwing your story. So despite the situation that you're in, and I can understand that many of y'all would have gone through extremely challenging times with respect to your business. But remember, you still have your life with you and you will be still scripting your story. Can I go to the next slide? And rule number five for me is, manage your mind and it starts with your morning. Your morning defines your day. And one day somebody had asked me, how do I change my life? I told him, try and start getting up early in the morning. If you get up at 4.30 or 5, you will see that your life will change because you've opened up a very sacred time for you that is only yours. And the moment you open that sacred time for you, you can do a lot more with yourself. Manage your energy. Your energy is more important than your intelligence. You may be Einstein, but if you don't have the energy, it is of no use to you. So your energy is the most important asset you have. And take, take each day at a time. You have no idea what is going to happen in three months. You and I are not going to be future tellers. We have no idea whether there's going to be a vaccine, not going to be a vaccine, what is happening. We have to take each day at a time. And we also need to understand that we have certain fears. My fear may be very different from yours. Your fear may be losing in my family. My fear may be losing my job. Your fear may be something else. You need to identify what your fear is because if you don't identify your fears, you will not be able to work on them. Next slide, please. The other thing is, and this is what I learned during my races, that you lose only when you refuse to get up. You don't lose when you lose a round. So you may have your business that you need to fold up. You may have a situation where you may say that it's all over, but you are defeated when you will decide that you have quit. And I, the first marathon that I ran, I remember at the 35th kilometer, I crashed. And I thought of completely giving up and going back home in a cab. But then I thought that, you know, if I don't complete this race today, it's not about the timing anymore. It's about me finishing this race. And I had completed those 35 kilometers in three three hours something. And it took me another one and a half hours to walk the next 15. And I hobbled through the, through the finish line. And to me, the realization was that defeat is when you refuse to get up. It's not when you do not get what the outcome is. And do not give it to your ego. You have to realize today that there are a lot of things beyond your control. This entire situation for, for many of us have realized how insignificant we are. And yet how blessed we are. We are blessed because we are with people who are around you. And this is my, my second last rule, which is saying that you need to use this time to get closer to the people who love, who you love and who love you. Because it is so important that these relationships will give you the strength to tie it over these times. So please do spend those times and find those people in your ecosystem that are true. We are flooded with information today. And what we need to do is, especially for our mental agility, we need to make sure that we can see the opportunity in the crisis when we have the mental space to see it. So declutter and prioritize. When you get up in the morning, I think the first four hours are your golden hours and use some part of that day to actually think through what you want to achieve rather than the tasks you want to complete. And the moment you shift that focus, you will realize that you are decluttering whatever is around you. So that's all I had to share, folks. Uh, I know it was uh, many, many thoughts, but uh, to me, uh, I, I had a feeling that I'm talking to a bunch of people. Many of you, I know many of you are people I would love to know better. And uh, I am sure that some of these you may have heard before. But the idea was, even if one or two things work for you during this time, I think my job is done. So thank you so much. Thanks, Amit. Over to you. Thanks, Amit. That was really a great uh, thought-provoking kind of insights. So we have a couple of questions. And what I would also request everybody is, if you have something to ask, please do raise your hand. And if you would like to talk, we will unmute you and you can directly ask your questions to Amit. 
And in, in the meanwhile, Amit, we have a few questions that have come. And uh, first of all, I'll start off with Cal's Kitchen. Uh, he's asking you a question, how to cope with negativism of work and business? Uh, work from home sucks, the life out of work-life balance. So I think the question is more about work-life balance and how do you kind of manage that? Yeah. No, Cal, it's a, it's a very important question because what has happened is our own space has become very restricted. Uh, and we have our, you know, sense of freedom is gone. You need to understand what is it that you were doing that you really enjoyed and that made you feel alive. And you have to bring that back into your day. Uh, many of us are becoming victims of overwork and in front of our computer. The two, three tips I would say, Cal, is one is uh, what has worked for me. Uh, I've started to cook and I really enjoy cooking because it's a natural creative activity and it takes me away from gadgets. And sometimes I cook with music as well. And it helps, you know, unload the family. I think the other thing is you, you should use this time to actually either read, read some inspirational or positive stuff or speak to the few people who really you connect with. Otherwise, what happens is you are going into your own circuit of negativity, which is absolutely natural. But those diffusers need to happen. The last thing, and many times when I feel worn and down, I actually do a 15 to 20 minute high intensity workout. Because what it does to me is it fires up all my neurons. And if you think that physical activity works for you, try it out. Just put on an HIIT on YouTube, just move. Because when you move, your energy will lift up and you will see a changed person at the, uh, at the other side of that exercise. So Amit, I think what questions are also coming is, uh, if I have to summarize it, can you suggest, uh, what to say, a day? Or how should one kind of plan out a week, especially if they're an entrepreneur? Uh, let me rephrase the question a little more better. What if, if we have no exercise at all, or, or, or we're just people you know, who are entrepreneurs going and doing their work? What is the basic thing that we should start off with? I think, you know, uh, the, okay, so to me, there are two things. One is the most important thing in anything is consistency. You, if you have to do it, you have to make sure that you do it because after a certain point of time, can it only become part of your routine and your habit situation, right? So I'll give you my own example. The 1st of May was when I started meditating regularly for 45 minutes in, my, in the morning. And today is the 4th of September. I have not missed a single day of meditation. And the benefits of that meditation started coming to me sometime in August. And now the quality of my day has completely changed. I used to meditate, but now I realize that consistent work. And I started with few minutes. I started with three minutes, four minutes. So my suggestion or my advice to you is, it is impossible, even as an entrepreneur, and I run an organization as well, that you cannot take out 15 minutes in the day for something that is incredibly important to you. Take out time either for your mind or your body, whatever works first, right? If you want to sit still, just sit still for those five minutes. Increase that five to 10 minutes the next week. If you want to move, move for five minutes in the first week, increase that to 10 minutes the next week, but keep at it. Keep at whatever you do for two weeks, which is why if you remember what I was telling you, do it for at least two weeks. And then you will see the benefits of that coming uh, incrementally. There is a saying which is that you know, when a woodcutter is sawing a tree, he doesn't know which swing of that ax is going to make that tree fall. Right? And that is what you need to understand. You will not know when is that day the magic will unfold for you. You have to believe that it will unfold for you. So just to add on to this, you know, uh, Harsh has asked a very interesting question. He's saying, how do you cope with negative thoughts that come up while you're meditating? Yeah, Harsh, it's, uh, you know, it's very natural. And the, the biggest issue with our mind is our mind goes all over the place. And I do get negative thoughts as well. But what I have realized is the number of those thoughts are coming slower and slower as the days are going more, Harsh, for me at least. That is one. I think the other thing that has helped me in terms of managing my own negative thoughts is writing. Uh, because what happens is when you write something that is bothering you, you have translated it from your subconscious to your conscious mind. And if you're a person who is overwhelmed at the end of the day, try writing whatever has bothered you, tear that piece of paper and throw it away and see if it works. Because then what you're doing is you're trying to empty your mind before you go to sleep. 
And a lot of times, Harsh, you will realize that what you sleep with is what you will wake up with. So you have to declutter what is in your headspace before you go to sleep. That last hour before you go to sleep is an, a very important hour for the quality of your sleep and the quality of your next morning. So try decluttering before your next morning meditation and see if it helps or it works for you. That's a fantastic tip, uh, Amit, writing down negative thoughts and throwing them away. And in line to the sleeping thing, Venkat has asked a question. He's saying that, you know, we've all become night animals because of this COVID and he's developed insomnia as a case. Uh, and, and, you know, he's also asking you, how do I get back to becoming healthy? And he wants to know a little bit about your weight loss journey, what he saw in the fix. Yeah. So, so let me start with the, with the weight loss journey. I think the, uh, the weight loss journey was not an easy one uh, because trust me, when you're running with 85 kilos on your body, every kilo uh, is like five more kilos uh, uh, when you're doing a long distance, right? Uh, but you know what happens is first you start losing your inches, then you start losing the weight. And the two things that go hand in hand, and I didn't talk much about it when I, when I was saying, you remember I was saying food, sleep and movement and I talked just about movement. I think the most important thing is what you put inside your mouth, right? And in, in times like this, what we don't realize is many of us resort to stress-related eating. And you need to consciously keep away foods that induce your stress-related eating away from your fridge or away from your desk. Whether it's chocolates, whether it's if you are consuming cigarettes, keep your cigarettes far away where it's tough for you to get to, right? But you have to move things away so that you are not tempted to pick it up subconsciously every time there is a trigger. So you have to watch your eating and maybe we can do another session along with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Naveen, somebody who's an expert on nutrition. I can share whatever tips have worked for me, but I really watched what I ate. Uh, I obviously went to a nutritionist. Uh, I redesigned my diet. And Indians have a tendency to eat a lot of carbohydrate rich diet. Uh, and one of the things I started to do was I gave up uh, a lot of grains uh, eating at night, uh, which kept me light. But I increased more protein in the morning, uh, which helped me with my workouts. Uh, and I also introduced something during the afternoon because what happens is days are long. We don't realize our days are really long and we start fading in the afternoon. And then our evenings become tough because we have not nourished ourselves in the afternoon well. Uh, and then we tend to overeat in the evening and dinner and that starts adding to our obesity because then we immediately go to sleep. So having an afternoon snack and a light dinner is a better idea than having nothing in the afternoon and a heavy dinner. And uh, that is the way. And you know, somebody asked about insomnia. Look, if your work is such that you, uh, you know, you are in a situation where you have to keep up at night. One is please avoid night coffee. Okay, I'm a victim of it. I should not be practicing what I'm saying because I also end up doing that. But you have to avoid uh, substances or foods that are increasing the dehydration level for you because your insomnia is coming from an imbalance in your system, right? Because your body A is too wired up. And if you add more caffeine to your body, your body will be even more wired up and you will be able to go to sleep. I think the other thing you need to do is you need to cultivate a habit that tricks your body into thinking that it is ready for sleep. The two, three things that I've seen working is you have to make your room completely dark when you have to go to sleep. You should have a zero light situation, right? Your body will wind down much more. That's one. You can try some sleep meditation. I used to do sleep meditation in the initial days of COVID when I also was feeling very stressed. There are lots of sleep meditation videos. Uh, there is a guy called uh, Jason Stephenson uh, I have tried to sleep meditation videos. They are very nice. They are two, three hour long videos and they will make you go to sleep. Try those if that helps you or try meditation and journaling before you go to sleep. Right. I think that will, that will really help you with your insomnia. And the last point I like to mention about this insomnia thing is you need to figure out how you get the rest in your body. Rest is as important as food and, and uh, exercise and breathing, because if your body doesn't rest, your body doesn't detoxify. You need those six to seven hours of good quality sleep. So if you're getting three, four hours of sleep in the night, get two hours of sleep in the day. It's not optimal, but get those one or two hours of sleep in the day. The other thing you can try is have a warm shower. 
before you go to sleep because a warm shower relaxes the muscles. The trick in this is have a cold shower in the morning and have a warm shower at night rather than the other way around. Many of us have a hot shower in the morning, but switch that with a cold shower. You'll see a much higher level of energy. Switch your warm shower at night where you'll see a, your body relaxing. So Amit, what happens if you become addicted to the TV and watching stuff? I think that also takes out a lot of time and builds insomnia. Yeah. Stage. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and this is what I was saying that, you know, the last hour, ideally, and a lot of people are now talking about it, is that you should keep all your gadgets outside the room in the last hour. Okay. Uh, and, you know, all of us have a tendency that the morning we wake up, and I'm also guilty of it, we wake up and we check our WhatsApp or we check our emails. Or in the middle of the night, we wake up and check our email. We need to keep the triggers of those outside the room. And the moment we start keeping those triggers outside at least, our sleep place should be only for our sleep, ideally. We should not have anything that is not related to our sleep in our sleep room. Got it. So here's an interesting question from Ishu. And uh, he or she is asking, you know, that, or telling you that they have been a traveler junkie throughout the life. And it's been six months that uh, he or she has stepped out. And, and right now uh, has developed claustrophobia claustrophobia and also the fear of just stepping out because you know uh, he or she fears that they might catch a virus so what's your thought on that I mean and I think the question is also to everyone are, are you all having the same fear of catching the virus I think Amit you can s switch on your healthcare hat a little and talk about what COVID is actually doing and should we really be afraid or not you know fear fear comes from uh, the unknown as well Naveen right? There are a lot of things we don't know, but there are certain things we know. The things we know is what is safe social distancing. The things we know is what are some of the good practices with, with relating to our personal hygiene and, you know, what we need to do. The thing we know is that outdoor spaces uh, and open environments are less, less prone to viral infection than closed spaces where there's a viral overload. Right. So I think what you need to do is issue. You need to understand what is the, what are really things that are in your mind as true fears and what are real risks. Right. Uh, and you have to have a balance because your life needs to go on. Uh, there are situations where people who have been indoors because of certain immunity have also got the virus. Right. What you need to work on is your immunity. Right. And obviously what you need to work on is you need to take those steps again, where you slowly start exposing yourself and going, you know, either in a protected environment or in very early hours of the morning where there's nobody around so that at least you get in fresh air. Fresh air is incredibly important. There is no study that is saying that you should be only in the confines of your house and then you shouldn't go and get fresh air. What people are saying is that you shouldn't go into overcrowded spaces and in an unprotective situation, right? So that is what I would urge you, right? I'm not encouraging that everybody should go out and party and picnic, but I think that there is a balance one needs to strike. And uh, you slowly need to read or become more aware of what is it that you need to do to build your immunity and how you can take steps to at least get out of home because claustrophobia will affect you in other ways, right? It'll affect your mental health. It'll affect your vitamin D levels if you're not exposing yourself to the sun. So it's incredibly important that you step out. Uh, Harsh also wants to ask you a question. What time of the day do you read your books? So I try and read Harsh. Uh, it depends. You see, uh, if it's more complicated text or spiritual text, I try and read in the morning after my meditation when I would like to absorb some things. If it's more relaxed reading, then I try and do it before, uh, you know, post dinner for a few pages before I go to sleep. But I really prefer, if I really want to absorb stuff, I prefer reading it in the morning. Uh, you know, because... Uh, that time my mind is fresh and I can really take in uh, what I want to read. So Amit, that leads me to the next question. Is it true that there are night people and day people? I mean, people who wake up early at, at the dawn and people who can't. What's your take on that theory? <laughs> so our body follows a certain rhythm. I mean, all our bodies follow a certain rhythm a rhythm of assimilation, assimilation, detoxification, and digestion, right? So go through these rhythms during the day. And these are set rhythms. 
called circadian rhythms, right? Now, ideally, the rhythm follows the time of day as well. Okay. Because the time of day, the temperature of the day helps us navigate that. Now, unless we are sitting in a completely different time zone, we adjust to that, right? So it's not that the day, the morning in India is equivalent to the morning in the US. But the activity set and the consistency with which we follow something will help us. So now, say if I am living my rhythm in a way that uh, my nights I'm awake and the daytimes I'm asleep, right? And if I follow that in a way that is consistent and I'm not continuously shifting that, then my body will adapt to it. Okay. But if I'm continuously shifting that, then the problem becomes, because it's like a car, right? If you jumpstart a car and if you accelerate it in a different way, your engine will become weaker. But if you're driving the car gradually in the same way day after day, the engine will actually become, you know, will stay longer. So our body is like that engine, right? So there's no day and night. It's a consistency. Got it. So I have a question from uh, Vishnu over here who has sent it prior. So he wants to know how, if you could kind of talk to us about what your 24 hour day looks like uh, with, with kind of lifestyle and eating habits uh, pitched into it. So how okay. do you pick up your, for a, he's a, he's a fairly, uh, what to say, he's at a growth stage. He's a series B entrepreneur and his, life activity is getting hectic and hectic. Yeah. So Vishnu, uh, you know, I have a mixed days. So I have a day job, right? Uh, which is from morning to evening. I have almost 60 to 70 meetings in a particular day, uh, whether they're client meetings or organizational meetings or whatever it is. Uh, and what I typically get up uh, between 6 to 6.30 in the morning. I used to get up earlier, but now I've started to get up between 6 to 6.30. Uh, I have a cup of coffee. Uh, with coconut oil. So it's basically called bulletproof coffee. Uh, but what it does is it uh, basically helps me with a sustained release of caffeine. Uh, it's an old habit, uh, but uh, I find it pretty active for me to get my morning wake. Uh, there are two things that I choose between. Uh, I usually have a 45 minute meditation, which I do. And uh, if the weather is not too warm, then I either go for a run or I do a 45 minute to an hour workout. So if I've, my first two hours are dedicated to meditation and physical exercise, right? Uh, my workday starts at nine o'clock. So uh, nine throughout till 6.30, 7. So it's 10 hours of focused work uh, where if I'm getting a break, if I've not worked out in the morning and the reason is I've started earlier in the morning. So I, I push my workout in the middle of the day. So I would uh, right now, because the weather is still okay and uh, you know I live in a suburb where I can uh, get out, I cycle. So I cycle for an hour during my uh, afternoon time if I can get that chance or I do a yoga workout uh, or a workout in the one to two frame. And then post 6.37 as my day uh, winds down, uh, I usually uh, cook because that relaxes me uh, or I spend time speaking to a friend uh, or I do some reading. So this is, uh, I don't watch much TV. I don't have a habit of watching TV. I would watch uh, maybe one hour of TV or two hours of TV in the whole week. Uh, the rest of the time is dedicated either to physical activity or to reading, uh, but not really TV time. So I, I actually save that time. And I usually sleep between 9.30 and 10. So, uh, you know, that's been my habit even pre-COVID because uh, the time you sleep at will define the time you wake at. Uh, so I try and get between seven to eight hours of sleep uh, every day. Okay. And, and Amit, uh, any basics in terms of starting to, in terms of lifestyle, what do you do to enrich your leadership qualities? So I think there are two or three things, right? Uh, and, you know, since you've talked about leadership, one of the things that I have, uh, I have come uh, to realize, Naveen, is uh, during this time, you know, uh, what leadership seemed to me was how are you being compassionate and everyone around you, right? Uh, I realized that the more I, the less I think about myself and the more I think about others, uh, actually it's the better place to be because the more I thought about myself and my fears, the more, you know, uh, anxious I was getting, but the more I focused on making sure that my team is okay, my employees are okay and everything is okay, the better it was for me day after day. And it helped me navigate through this time as well. So one is that I think the other thing is, you see, leadership to me is a constant journey, right? 
and you have to think that leadership is not about a title it's not about a designation it's not about a role it's about how you live your life thinking about what is the best way you can add value to yourself and to everybody around you without expecting anything in return because the moment you start expecting things that's when you start feeling anxious about the result right and at this time i realized that a lot of things i will do actually will also not will be futile because the outcome is not known and that's a lesson in leadership i think you know leadership has got tested at this time for many people because you are uncertain about your own career how will you take care of people around you right and it's it's the most important time that you take care of people around you despite what is happening because this is this time is not going to be permanent it's going to get over but how you have behaved in this time will define you as an individual after you come out of it and that is why i'm saying it's so important that maybe this virus will get over in one month two months six months but when we look back we will try and see during this time how did we spend this time right what are the things we did for our people what are the things we did to even transform ourselves and that is leadership to me very well put it amit so here's a question from rahul a uh, very interesting one how do you handle withdrawal due to stopping of addictions like smoke and alcohol he says that you know that he's just moved to mumbai and his parents are there so his access at the moment is not that much so he's asking about how do you manage withdrawal symptoms you know the smoking thing rahul i'll tell you uh, i used to smoke as well and uh, you know the habit of smoking went away with running uh, when you replace the air of that cigarette with the air the fresh air of oxygen uh you will realize that you're breathing something much sweeter uh and i'm just giving you a very open practical tip i used to smoke sometimes 8 to 10 12 cigarettes a day and the way i got out of that habit was uh, through running uh and physical workout because when your body is feeling good you will not want to pump in stuff that will not make it feel good right uh i don't know if it will work for you but to try physical activity that's one the other thing is you see what you need to understand about any habit is that there is a trigger that puts the habit in front of you or that act in front of you and you have to take away the source of that habit and replace it with something else so you know it's perfectly fine and all of us have cravings you would also have craving for an alcohol but you need to understand how you what is the trigger for that alcohol is it a tiring day is it something that somebody has told you is it just that you want something you know uh, fizzy in your mouth you have to think about that that what is the trigger and slowly you have to work on it by a reducing or doing away with that trigger that's the only way you can change that habit you will not be able to change the habit by forcing or restraining yourself from it you will get frustrated and you will replace that with something else what you have to focus on what is the trigger for that habit thanks rahul i'm so proud you got your answer for that So Prakash is asking you another interesting question uh, with respect to the ones that you mentioned about how you divide your day. So he says that you know how can one make their evenings more energetic? And he has a lot of mental heavy mental work and feels exhausted by five six p.m. And he has a note and he adds a note saying that he doesn't take tea or coffee. Yeah. So Prakash, one thing you have to remember is hydration. Right. Many times our brains get fried when we are not watering our brains. uh and you know a brain typically consumes 400 to 600 calories a day when you're doing heavy mental work you're consuming 800 to 900 calories in that day which means almost one and a half hours of running so just imagine you are doing one and a half hours of intense running without running so you need to hydrate and you need to have nutrition if you, one of the things you may want to see is if you're getting brain brain fog in the evening it's a lot to do with your nutrition and your vitamin levels which you should get yourself checked right and especially for vegetarians that uh, you know we have a natural tendency to have lower vitamin b and vitamin e leads to a lot of brain fog in the evening so that's one i think the other thing you may want to do as a pick up for the 5 to 6 pm when you start getting exhausted is either a walk or a staircase run or any physical movement for 10 minutes right a physical movement will pick you up which is what i was trying to share in the afternoon that that pick up for me is that physical movement right so try and do that hydrate yourself as well as physical movement the other thing which i was mentioning earlier is the afternoon snack try and have something which is in the afternoon that takes you for the next 5 6 hours 
like one of the things I like to do is I have apple with peanut butter, right? Which is protein plus a carbohydrate and it's a light snack, but uh, that helps me rather than having a dosa or, you know, something which is heavy, uh, have a fruit, have some peanut butter, have a light switch, but it will take you through the day. Thanks, Amit. Uh, very interesting question from Ashish has just come up. He's asking you a question. If, is this an interesting time to start a business in healthcare? Absolutely. Ashish, you've just opened the Pandora's box over there, man. Absolutely, Ashish. It's always a good time. I think, so I think Ashish, the world has never more focused on health than it is now. But let me also tell you that you need to think about, when you think about a business, think about what is going to be relevant few years down the line. The problem we have is we try and build something that everybody else has built before, right? And that's when it doesn't work for us. So for example, everybody's talking about telehealth. Telehealth is done and dusted. You have to think, what is the next wave in health going to be? Is food going to be the new medicine? Is you know, mental health going to be the next wave? And then find your idea that when you launch, it's going to be relevant two, three years down the line. But I mean, I am in healthcare. I can tell you there's no better time than now to think through what you can do in health. Good. So Amit, I think our questions are almost done. So if you have any parting advice for folks. No, I've spoken enough. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope this was, uh, this was useful uh, to all of you. Uh, stay safe. Take care of yourselves and make the best of this time. And Swati, don't worry, don't get stressed. Uh, we'll definitely have more such sessions. And uh, thanks, Amit. This is really, really useful. And folks, if you are interested in more such sessions, Amit has a bunch of excellent trainers, nutritionists, psychologists, whom he would love to get to the forum and we could have great sessions going forward. We also have a session on personality traits and uh, especially for entrepreneurs, uh, which is coming up soon. It's a workshop. I think it's a four day workshop, which uh, is going to look at interventional aspects of uh, an entrepreneur's mindset and personality. Not to say that any personality is right or wrong, but just to basically try and see with this personality characteristic set, how one can kind of enhance and become a much more successful uh, entrepreneur. So thank you folks. Thanks Amit. Uh, these are some of our events coming up. Please do look at them. And Amit, this is really an interesting session. And, and frankly, some of those questions are also real questions from me. And you know me, so I better get running as well. So thank, thank you. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.